Pat Love with Pat's Two Cents. Here to read 1 Thessalonians 4, <laughs> uh, chapter 16, 17, and 18. All right, here we go. For the Lord himself shall descend from heaven with a shout, with the voice of the archangel and the trump of God, and the dead in Christ shall rise first. Then we, which are alive and remain, shall be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air, and so shall we ever be with the Lord. Wherefore, comfort one another with these words. Now, the only thing I have to say about this is these are the last days, the last of the last. And let me tell you, baby cakes, I honestly believe that we are so close, so close. We don't know the day nor the hour. We know that. But we also must watch, we must watch how we walk in holiness. There's a scripture up higher in the same chapter. And uh, this is kind of a, a warning, an admonishment. A word of correction and I'm trying to find us so just bear with me for a minute ah uh, where is that thing okay let me read these uh, uh there it is okay verse um, 2 3 and 4 same chapter for you know what commandments we gave you by the Lord Jesus for this is the will of God even your sanctification, that ye should abstain from fornication. That every one of you should know how to possess his vessel in sanctification and honor. So I say all that to say, listen, there is a scripture that says whoremongers, adulterers, liars, all of that. They're not going to make it into heaven. They're just not. So if you're toying, if you're toying around, if you're playing on the enemy's turf, if you're warming yourself by the devil's fire and playing with little demonic toys of pleasure, yeah, and lust, you have to be careful. It, it seems like it's, it's harmless fun. I mean, come on, after all, God made you with these desires, right? He gave you these desires, and, and, and I mean, you know, why would he punish you for fulfilling a need here or there? Well, let's put it like this. He set certain things in order for our protection, mind you. And I'm telling you, his love is not there with his commandments to cause us to lose out on all the fun. You're not losing out on the fun when your spirit is aligned with the spirit of God. When your spirit is contrary to the spirit of God, it's enmity. It works against this like opposites. They're pulling apart in two different directions. So you have a tug of war, there go, thereby having a struggle, let's say. But when you are in alignment with the Holy Spirit, there is no struggle. There is no war. Why? Because everything God wants, you want. See, when he fills you with his Holy Spirit, it changes our nature. God's not trying to be a party poop. He's not trying to be a killjoy. He's just being our father. But he also stacks the deck in our favor. So when we feel like, you know, we have to watch the do's and the don'ts, we don't have to worry about the don'ts if we're walking in him because we won't be feeding that. See, when you starve something, it dies. And the Bible says if you resist the devil, he'll flee. And let me tell you an example, just a quick example. 
When the Lord delivered me from cigarettes, I had no idea this was getting ready to happen this night. It was September the 6th. It was probably about 8 or 9 at night. I had come home from the night service. Had not had a cigarette all day long. And that was the morning, that morning I gave my heart to the Lord during the first service. We went to another church after we ate to a second service and came back and went to our own service, which was service number three. Yeah. So, Baby Cakes wanted a cigarette. Now, I had a two-pack-a-day, 15-year cigarette habit. Mm -hmm. Now, at that point, like I said, I was at two packs a day, right? I had a desire for cigarettes. I had never had that strong in my life. So I kind of smelled the rat. But let me tell you, I'm going to make this real quick. Do you know what was so beautiful about this experience? After I went through the debate about is it in the Bible, thou shalt not smoke, blah, 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 and hearing the Lord say, your body is the temple of God, and I lost that argument. Well, what got me was once my mind was made up, the struggle was over. Now, it didn't happen right away. This is the way it happened, but it happened in that moment. Listen, I took my cigarettes when I finally conceded to what the Lord wanted. The struggle, right? But I finally conceded. I'm working on these cigarettes, and I'm tearing, and I'm ripping, and I'm mangling them, and they are nothing but crumbs in my hand. Full pack of cigarettes, only missing one. Yeah, so I knew I was going to suffer all night if this didn't work. And while I'm crumbling them, I'm saying out of my mouth, I rebuke the desire for these cigarettes in the name of Jesus. I wasn't authoritative and bold and courageous like I look now. I was scared. <laughs> I didn't even want to look. But I did it. And when I said it, Simultaneously, I dropped the, the cigarette crumbs from my hands and I felt a physical presence I didn't even know was there lift off of me. And the desire was gone. You hear me? The desire was gone. So, I say that to say, Whatever God wants you to do, he will empower you to do. Amen.